Hi, everyone, and welcome. I'm Jen Balco, host and creator of the Fierce Awakened Woman Global Online Conference. And this is day five. All good things must come to an end. Or maybe things are just beginning. So I'm going to first start with something that Dr. Jean Shinoda Bolin did as a way to connect us uh, in her live session um, and to connect to everybody in the room and virtually. I know we're doing Facebook Live now as well. Oh, Margaret, would you mind just, um, if everybody could just take a second and mute themselves, that would be great. Thank you so much. And just to really ground us in this last day, it's been really a long journey. I'm looking forward to hearing how you found the sessions, how, what you liked about it. But for this moment, let's just take a second and place your hands on your heart or your belly, wherever you feel good. And I'm going to ring a bowl. And today we're celebrating all of this fierce awakened humanity. So let that be sort of the intention with the sound that's going to carry us out today. As the sound sort of drifts away, let our intentions just float off, connecting sound and heart together as a community of the fierce awakened woman, celebrating fierce awakened humanity. And today I'm going to go off script a little bit and follow the yes and intention that I woke up with this morning at 3 a.m. and couldn't shake out of my head. So I wanna tell you, the, the theme for today is we're gonna move from, earlier in the week we were talking about enchantment and wonder and how we can dream into the space of the fierce awakened woman. And now as we come full circle through the whole journey this week, the next part and the next grounded piece of courage is the action of yes and. So the story that I have for you here goes back to my long walk from Bangkok to Barcelona with Luis, my partner. And I've mentioned this walk over the course of the week. And what I woke up with this morning about the yes end was to go all the way back to the beginning. And the beginning was around June 2013. My friend Amy sent me a Facebook post or tagged me in a Facebook post about um, Paul Salapek walking from Africa to the edge of the world. And she said something like, um, Jen Balco, I think you can do better than this. And Paul Salapek is like a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist and he's doing slow walking for like I think he's going to be 10 years walking or something like that. And his walk is out of Eden. And I was so intrigued by his walk. He had been in Ethiopia at the time and was walking north towards, um, towards North Africa at the time. And then I started to poke around and I ended up on an Instagram website, an Instagram post about a guy who was cycling from Oregon to Patagonia. Which I thought was incredible. Hi, also. Lauren. 
Hi, everybody. Just when you come Thanks in, the night, can Cole. you mute yourself, please? Thank you. So we were cycling from, uh, this guy is cycling from Oregon to Patagonia. It was so intriguing. Well, cycling to continents, it was amazing. So then I clicked through his website. And the website was of his parents. In the 1970s, his father walked across the United States. And then he met his mother. You know, the father met the mother. They became a couple and they walked across the United States together. That blew my mind. In this day, in June 2013, I already knew that the what if had turned to a yes end. In this impulsive, without even a second thought, I emailed Luis at work. It was like a June afternoon. It was really hot. I remember it was already starting to feel like summer. And I sent him this email like, hey, check what these people have done. And before we're old and broken, why don't we do like a long walk from, I don't know, Barcelona to Bangkok? That's how it first came out. I thought we were going to walk away from home instead of coming towards it. About 15 minutes later, he emailed saying, well, that's a long way. He came home that night and in our office, we had a huge uh, wall map marked with all the places we had been and where we were hoping to go to. And we looked like, wow, look at this map. What if we could actually walk from Bangkok to Barcelona? By then we had already started to think like, Barcelona, Bangkok, Bangkok, Barcelona, whatever. But there were all these places in the middle, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, um, all these places that we hadn't been to, Iran, like we were just like wow these are old silk road countries like maybe we can do this the next day Luis went to work and the idea is already in his head and he emails me and says hey what if we walked from Buenos Aires to San Francisco and well, suddenly we had two possibilities. I quickly replied within a few minutes after I saw it and said, well, that's a long way. And we, he came back after work and we stood again in front of the map and went, oh my God, Buenos Aires to San Francisco as a walk. Look at that possibility too. And this is what I want us to consider as we're redefining what Fierce and Awakened is, is that, do you notice that there was never a no here? Luis never said no. He came back with, what about this possibility? And both of us, we, we are huge travelers and backpackers already. And I spoke about that too. I have a lot of wanderlust and nomadic sort of journeying. Um, and I never thought that I would take a pilgrimage, a walking personal pilgrimage across two continents, you know, all across the Europe, Asia landmass. That was never a possibility until this sort of following these little breadcrumbs all over the internet led me to an email that said, before we're old and broken, let's go do this. And he said, yes. And he said, yes, end. So we had already moved out of the enchantment stage and into the action. And this was in 2013. And I said, okay, let's go. Let's go in six months. <laughs> Luis is really rooted and grounded and, and um, adventurous, but conservative on, you know, how that would all happen. So he said, no, we'll wait five years and save enough money. I'm like, well, five years, that's sort of, why are we even talking about this then? Who knows what could happen in five years? So you, so what ended up happening, the universe sort of cut it right down the middle for us. We left almost exactly two and a half years from when that first idea was, was started. And we started on my 44th birthday. Those were the first footsteps out of 
Bangkok in January of 2016. And it took us three and a half years with breaks and pauses and a, a surgery in India that I had. And we made it back last June. 2019, uh, not last June, 2019, June 2019. So that's the invitation now for us. We've journeyed through the fierce awakened woman. We've started to consider it from a place of enchantment and wonder and joy what that could possibly look like. So now the intention is how can we say yes and where can you lean into that? And where does your heart feel called to take you in the next, in the next week, in the next hour, in the next year? How can you begin to move from the wonder stage to the action stage? And Jocelyn Mercado talked about this in her speech, in her presentation as well, of that sacred yes to the fierce action. And Mei Ling Chan, who's on the call today also had a really insightful moment of that recognition of you're not trying to get there, you're already here, right? So there's this duality that's kind of coming into place here. We are always becoming. So as we step into our next step of becoming, what are you saying yes to? And as we lean into that, I want to close us out officially um, for the conference. All of the sessions are still available. I'm engaging and encouraging of slow listening this week. So you can take your time and go back and re-listen to some sessions. All of the sessions from Monday to Friday will be available until Monday morning, 6 a.m. Europe time which will be like sort of late Sunday night in North America and South America. And for anything West of Europe, you'll have, you'll have a few more hours on Monday morning to, to catch that. So go back and if you heard something once and you wanna hear it again, go back and re-listen. If you missed one of the many practices that were offered this week, go back and do it this week. And for sure on Friday, you know, take advantage of Friday sessions. There's there's, we're infusing all of this with love through sound. So that to me felt like the last movement through this journey is finding your own soul song and being true to that and letting that come through in whatever way that you haven't even imagined yet because that's how it might come and it might come more slow uh, in a slower way. So do what feels good. And let me just close this out with a Mary Oliver poem. And uh, I have my friend Sheila to thank for introducing me to Mary Oliver. I've become really in love with her. So the, the poem is, how would you live then? What if a hundred rose-breasted grosbreck beaks flew in circles around your head? What if the mockingbird came into the house with you and became your advisor? What if the bees filled your walls with honey and all you needed to do was ask them and they would fill your bowl? What if the brook slid downhill just past your bedroom window so you could listen to its slow prayers as you fell asleep? What if the stars began to shout their names or to run this way and that way above the clouds? And what if you painted a picture of a tree and the leaves began to rustle? and the birds cheerfully sang from its painted branches. What if you suddenly saw that the silver of water was brighter than the silver of money? And what if you finally saw that the sunflowers 
turning towards the sun all day and every day. Who knows how, but they do it. We're more precious and more meaningful than gold. How would you live then by Mary Oliver? And that's what I send you off into the world to think about. How would you live then? How would you live if you move from what if imagination and enchantment to the actual yes, and I'm going to do it, even if I don't have any clue in the world how it's going to turn out? You, you'll have to find out for yourself. I don't know the answer to that. And as we go off and figure out how to bring these gifts to the world and co-create whatever's next for all of us, I do want to invite you to stay in touch. You know, there's I have on the event schedule page, and I will put it on the bottom of this video as well, all the different ways that you can stay in touch with me. There's the Facebook group, the private Facebook group, there's, um, which is called Fierce Awakened Woman. There's uh, Instagram at Jen Balco, uh, J-E-N-N, and then my last name, B-A-L-J-K-O. If you're interested in upcoming classes and workshops and webinars that I'll be hosting, including the one that's coming up on April 6th, there'll be more information coming up um, early next week about all of this on my website, alwaysonmyway.com. If you're interested in editorial consulting and mindful writing, um, jenniferbalco.com is the place where I do that at. <laughs> and just stay in touch. I would love to hear from you. I would love to see how life is moving through you and, and inspiring you to move forward. So with that, I'll send you off into the world. Thank you, everyone.